Hello Normans, welcome to this week's Norman News. I'm Noel Trost. And I'm Bennett Gershwin. Stay tuned for news on the LAX protests. And more news on the candidate forum. Hey everyone, I'm the one and only Jacob Rabanian serving it up with this week's sports. Hi, I'm Leo Padilla with this week's entertainment news. Around the school in 30 minutes, this, this is, is the, the Norman, Norman News. news. Hey Normans, feeling a bit lonely for Valentine's Day? Are you looking for a little excitement? Well, the library is offering the perfect opportunity. Blind dates with books. Come to the library from today to February 14th and pick up a blind date covered in newspaper with only clues on the cover. No judging books by their covers here. In all serious note, seriousness though, uh, studies have shown that as human beings we process images quicker and as a result, uh, make our own conclusions before we have a chance to read the text. And let's be real here, book lovers, we've all been guilty of picking up some gorgeous leather-bound hardcover, only to find it to be a much boring later. Anyway, while you're at the library checking out your date options, feel free to take a moment to appreciate the festive Valentine's Day decorations. And now to Eva with Health News. Thanks, Noelle. Health officials across the United States are still urging people to get their flu vaccines as the virus continues to spread in 40 states and Puerto Rico and has been associated with 15 pediatric deaths. The latest report from the CDC says over 12,000 cases of influenza A have been reported across the country. 51 of the 54 U.S. states and territories are experiencing ele elevated levels of the flu and flu-like illnesses. So make sure to get your flu vaccines and wash your hands. And now to Bennett with more news. Stressed about colleges? Sick of hearing about it all the time? Like it's a 50-pound bag of sand you have to balance on top of your head? Well, too bad, because the bulletin is still advertising college nights and the like. I guess that even in the light of the application process being basically over, we still have to have this fixation on colleges. Who can blame them? It sells. For you juniors out there, or you self-loathing seniors, come on down to the February 7th college night at 6.30pm in the Salter Theatre to learn how to get into highly selective colleges. Harvard, Stanford, and all those other big names are hard to get into, so make sure you come to the college night so you can learn how to make them take your money. And now to Leo with his most recent story. Thanks, Bennett. Breaking news, Israel's defenses have gone up more than 500%. Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu just released a statement claiming that Israel is now indestructible. What was he referring to? Earlier today, Prime Minister Netanyahu met with action movie star Chuck Norris. As Chuck Norris expressed his support for the state of Israel, while the exchange was light and heart Lighthearted and a funny moment occurred as Netanyahu joken, jokingly ordered his security out of the building, claiming with Chuck Norris around, security was no longer needed. Maybe this is a sign for an amazing future for the security of Israel. And out of Jake and Thomas with Sports News. Thanks, Leo. Possibly the worst blowout in Clippers history. On Saturday night, the Clippers went off against the Golden State Warriors or the Western All-Stars in a game everyone knew they weren't going to win. Stephen Curry led the Warriors and scored 43 points, followed by Kevin Durant's 9 assists. Maybe if Adam Silver allowed the trade of Chris Paul going to the Los Angeles Lakers instead of Kevin Durant going to a team led by three Western All-Stars, this game would have been more closer. Tune in the finals in a couple of months to see the Warriors beat the Cavaliers 4-1 in the finals. And now to Thomas with the more sports news. Thanks, Jake. The Beverly Hills High School varsity basketball team played against Santa Monica, our rivals, in what I would call one of the greatest basketball games I've seen yet. Our star player, Ron Artest III, totaled a whopping 13 blocks in the game. Yeah, 13. Although Beverly did lose the game, I had a great time, and I'm looking forward to a deep playoff run from our Beverly Hills High School Normans this, again this year. Now back into Adam with more sports news. In a five-set thriller against his nemesis, Rafael Nadal, at the Australian Open sat Sunday night. Federer appeared to be in great form despite this tournament being his first take in six months after having taken the rest of the last season off to recover from a knee surgery. This paid off as Federer seemed to be in incredible form throughout the whole Australian Open. Federer showed off his endurance in a marathon for three hours and 40 minutes of outstanding tennis. Federer got off to a great start, winning the first set in 35 minutes. Apart from a few ups and downs, he was sharp through making it through the tough mission for Nadal. 
Let's hope Federer can continue the streak into the French Open. And now back to Thomas with more sports news. Thanks, Leo. An easy win for Manchester United this past week, playing against Wigan Athletic at the most famous Old Trafford, beating them 4-0, getting goals from Maron Fellaini, Chris Smalling, Henrik Mikatarian, and Bastian Schweinsteiger. Man U is sitting a steady 6th place right in front of Everton, but right below, Kevin De Bruyne le led Man City. Catch our next game February 1st against Hull City. So Thomas, my brother from another mother, Super Bowl, what do we got? You know, I was really sad. My favorite team, the Atlanta Falcons, Falcons lost. Okay. But, uh, you know, I'm happy we got there. And uh, I think we'll go there again soon. That's exactly what I'm saying. I know they were up, what, was it 28-3, to 25-point lead? 25 points, yeah. Um, Matt Ryan's young. They have a young team, Julio Jones, Devontae Freeman. Yeah. I think they will be back there soon enough. Definitely will be. Okay, and now let's send it to Sophia with news on Selena and Justin. Thanks, Thomas. Selena Gomez must have been sick of those same old love rumors with Justin Bieber, which caused her to confirm the budding romance between herself and The Weeknd. The duo were first spotted kissing outside of LA's Giorgio Baldi after a dinner date, and they must have really enjoyed the Italian food, because just two weeks later, they jetted off to Italy. She shared a video of The Weeknd amidst a romantic boat ride in the canals of Venice, and her hard-eyed caption explained it all. However, she quickly deleted the video. Strange. But even stranger is what their couple name would be. I have been considering the Geek End or Salik End. Now let's send it to Eva with more entertainment news. Thanks, Yasmin. Say bonjour to the new Miss Universe. Miss France, Iris Midanair, took home the 2017 title on January 29th in Manalia, Philippines, making her only the second Miss France to ever wear the crown. Miss Haiti Raquel Pellisser was named the first runner up, while Miss Colombia, Andrea Tovar, was second runner up. Miss France, who is pursuing a degree in dental surgery, beat 85 other hopefuls in the finale of the 65th edition of the show that focused on the diversity of empowering women and to overcome struggles of life. And now back to Yasmin with this week's movie review. Hey Normans, based on the book by W. Bruce Cameron, a dog's purpose is about a devoted dog that discovers the meaning of its own existence. He does this through the lives of the humans with whom he teaches to laugh and love. Reincarnated as multiple canines over the course of five decades, the lovable pooch develops an unbreakable bond with a kindred spirit named Ethan, played by Bryce Gazar. As the boy grows older and comes to a crossroads, the dog once again comes back into his life to remind him of the true self, a once-in-a-lifetime love or the spotlight. Co uh, grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, and watch this great movie clip. What is the meaning of life? Are we here for a reason? Is there a point to any of this? And why does food taste so much better in the trash? This was me, and then this was me. Then I came back as this little guy. A lot of lives for one dog to live, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning. I'm a new soul. For me, it all began with a boy. <laughs> His name was Ethan. Bailey, 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 Bailey. My name was Bailey, 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 Bailey. Bailey, do it. What does he want from me? Get it out. Get out. Whenever life got Ethan down, I knew exactly what to do. Ready? I'm ready. Go, Bailey! We oh. played with that ball all afternoon. Ethan loved it. Sometimes he just needed a little nudge. Go! Oh. Whoa! Sorry. That was the dog. That wasn't me. Okay, well, maybe you should teach your dog some manners. We spent every day together. Were they fighting over food? No, nothing in there. As the years went by, I could tell my time with Ethan was coming to an end. Good boy, Bailey. I'm gonna miss you. And then, it happened. I was back. I didn't have a... I'm a girl? Good girl, good girl. I had a new purpose. I was needed again. And again. And again. With each new life, I was learning a new lesson. Hey, uh, <laughs> hmm, have we met before? Where did you find that? Okay, ready? Go! I 
tried to make sense out of all the things I'd seen. Was there a point to this journey of mine? And how did bacon fit in? If I can get you licking and loving, I have my purpose. Ethan, why do you always have this dog with you? It's like a girlfriend replacement or something? <laughs> the dog's laughing at you. Dogs don't laugh. <laughs> That's funny. Thanks, myself. America wasn't the only thing getting sucker punched on January 20th. As seen in a video trending online, alt-right leader Richard Spencer was punched not once, but twice in the side of the head on Inauguration Day. Uh, this launched a rigorous online debate. Is it ever okay to punch a Nazi in the face? While Spencer does not call himself a Nazi, his, infa his infamous Hail Trump salute and belief in ethnic cleansing suggest otherwise. Many flock to Spencer's side, stating that he is protected by his right to free speech. Um, na Nazi says what? As a proud Jewish woman, I am a firm believer in the punch a Nazi movement. Normalizing hateful speech and sympathizing with oppressors is what gives people like Nazis power. Now, I'm not trying to promote violence or punching whoever you want. I'm talking about Nazis specifically. We grow up learning from the media and history that Nazis are evil, and that's why we punch them in the first place. Why go back in time? That's why I say punch your local Nazi. Talk smack, get smacked. And now I'm Michael with National News. Thanks, Jasmine. Last week, Donald Trump, in reality TV fashion, announced his pick for the Supreme Court last week. He, his pick was Neil Gersh, a judge from the appeal courts in Ohio. Gersh has been a judge to, uh, for many years and has received much praise by conservatives for this choice. Gersh, however, has never worked in the D.C. circuit, where most Supreme Court judges come from. However, many have stated that he would be an apt replacement for Scalia, as he holds many of the same viewpoints. The only question is whether Democrats will vote, as they need 60 votes in the Senate. And now to Yasmin with this week, with her news. Thanks, Michael. Recently, at Greenleaf Gourmet Chop Shop, this restaurant focused mainly on health-conscious foods that are tasty and filling. They serve delicious and reasonably priced food and juices, as... Well, I decided to try the three bean salad from one of the sides, which has a bold and sweet citrus flavor. And now to Bennett with more news. Thanks, Yasmin. On Saturday the 28th, the Santa Monica Airport reached an agreement with the federal government promising to immediately shorten its runways and also to close by 2028. In 2014, Santa Monica voters passed Measure LC, which mandates that if the airport were to close, the only permitted uses would be parks, open space, recreation, education, and or cultural uses. So it looks like we've got a cool park opening up in around 10 years. On the other hand, this was an issue that we were talking about. Like, there were actual legal battles and stuff. I, I mean, maybe it was like a Santa Monica thing. I think we were talking about subways or whatever measure, measure HH is too much to be able to notice anything else happening. Do you know we got a new president? And now to Noel with some news on the candidate forum. Thanks, Bennett. The candidate forum is right around the corner. On February 22nd, uh, Interact and Team BHEF invites you to join them at the John Turney Lecture Hall to get to know the candidates running for city council from 5 to 7 p.m. A series of questions will be asked of the potential city council members, allowing yourself to familiarize with the candidates. Currently on the council, we have Lily Boss, Julian Gold, and Kathy Rimes. The best part of this forum, snacks and refreshments will be provided. So, even if you're not showing up for the spirit of a future voter in Beverly Hills, at least show up for the food. And now to Leo with some more recent news. Thanks, Noel. Breaking news, it seems that President Trump is not the only one looking to suppress the amount of foreign immigrants into the country. Now China has become immigration policies, including background checks on immigrants and fingerprint scans. Now, if you enter any part of China through an airport, even just for vacation, Chinese officials will require you to scan your finger fingerprint, which will be held in a database. Chinese government claims it's for security purposes and tracking of immigrants. The only difference between situations in China and America is that we probably won't be getting any riots in China because protests in Chinese history haven't gone so well. And now to Bennett with some more news. Thanks, Leo. Looks like this Trump fellow might be problematic. Who'd have thunk it? Following his executive order to ban travel to the U.S. from seven Muslim-majority countries and suspend refugee arrivals, people arriving from those countries are being detained at LAX. 
Customs officials are not allowing attorneys or their families any access or communication with the detainees, making it very difficult to determine exactly how many people have been detained. Out of outrage towards this new treatment of green card holders, tourists, parents, and people with medical problems, attorneys have gathered at LAX literally walking around asking people if they're waiting for someone who's been detained. On Saturday afternoon, an immigrant legal aid organization called out for help, requesting Arabic and Farsi translators to help them assist those currently detained at LAX. People who legally live in this country are being detained simply because of their background. This is not okay. If you can translate Farsi or Arabic and would like to volunteer your time, I urge you to contact the Immigrant Defenders Law Center. They have said that a Facebook message is the best way to contact them, so be sure to visit their page at facebook.com slash imdef, that's I-M-M-D-E-F. Thanks for tuning in. That's all for this week. Stay tuned next week for more Norman, Norman News. News.